Hi, my name is Amit Elor. I'm Team USA's Olympic team member at Women's Freestyle 68 kilograms. I mean, growing up, I did a whole bunch of sports. I did gymnastics, taekwondo, tennis, jiu-jitsu, judo. I even did some horseback riding, but wrestling is like my favorite. It's hard to imagine not wrestling. I started wrestling when I was four years old. My older brother was the first one in our family to start wrestling. There was a local kids club and for months I asked if I could join and eventually they allowed me to join and I started wrestling. Uh, back then I was the only girl up until I was in middle school. So I competed a lot and trained with boys when I was younger. And then as I got older, I got the opportunity to train with more girls. And then I slowly was able to start making these age group teams and going to international competitions like Pan Ams and Cadet Worlds. And it's all gone by so fast. Growing up, my role models were Helen Marlis, Adeline Gray, and then later on Tamira. And now I'm, I'm in Tamira's weight, so I feel like I really want to go out there and represent for her. I think the most challenging part has been avoiding burnout. I've been wrestling since I was four years old. I think it's been managing injuries and being careful not to overtrain. It's been a lot of the sacrifices I've made. Uh, when I was 14, I started traveling a lot for wrestling. I was in and out of high school going through independent study programs, so I had to do a lot of studying on my own. I flew back and took a bunch of tests at the same time. So I was managing all the areas of my life on top of wrestling. I think that has been an overall big challenge for me. I have to say thank you to everyone who's ever supported me and everybody who has believed in me. I think I wouldn't have been here today if it wasn't for my family. They have been extremely supportive of my wrestling. My mom, when I was younger, she would always drive me anywhere for a practice. Uh, sometimes we would drive an hour there and back just to get a good practice in. She would always fly with me up up until now, she still flies with me to my competitions and supports me wherever I go. She's my number one fan, my biggest supporter, and I feel like everyone in my family, we, we really support each other in pursuing our own dreams. I think I'm really lucky to have Sarah, and I think it's really special because she's a 2004 Olympian, very first year that women's wrestling was added to the Olympics in, in Athens, Greece, and so now she's back in my corner as my coach 20 years later. She is one of the strongest people I know and she has had so many experiences and she's so she has so much knowledge of wrestling and just life in general. She's kind of taught me not to be afraid to speak up for myself and ask for what I need. She is a very strong person and I can see that with the way she carries herself. And so I think I've learned as an athlete from her and from other women around me to communicate more about what I need as an athlete. And to think more about myself because I'm always thinking about other people. I'm thinking about what my coach needs, how my coach feels, how my training partner feels, what my parents are thinking and feeling. And it's taking a minute to think of what I need and to focus on that too, because that's part of being an athlete. I'm so, I'm so glad I have her in my corner. So I wrestled at 68 kilograms in 2021, and that used to be my normal body weight and I didn't have to cut very much for that. But then I had a back surgery in 2021 and after my recovery, even when I was training, my weight stabilized around 72. And recovering from the back surgery, I didn't want to have to cut weight. And even right now, I think when you get older, you think you stop growing at 18, but there's so much more development that happens after that. So my body is way more comfortable at 72. However, I feel comfortable making the drop to 68 because I was at that weight in 2021. I made my first senior world team in 2022. That was after having my back surgery because I had my back surgery at the end of 2021. So going into the 2022 season, I had no expectations except to do my very best. I made the team. I tried my very best and I really surprised myself that year winning the world championship. I surprised myself and I learned that don't be afraid to dream big, but also make sure to enjoy your journey. Be there every single day, whether it's good or bad, and keep trying your very best. I don't think winning U20 Worlds before Senior Worlds gave me any boost of confidence, but I did think it really helped me because the setup of a world championship is very similar, whether it's age group or senior. And I also think that it doesn't matter whether it's age group or senior, because you can have very talented, good wrestlers at 
any age, we see a lot of young people entering the Olympics right now. So when I compete in the U20 division, I am not underestimating anybody because I think there could be somebody else out there and there are other people out there just like me. So I'm, I'm ready for them. This year has been a lot, a lot busier than other years with going and doing the wrestle off at 68 kilograms and then winning the wrestle off you know, it was good, but it, at the same time, there is a lot of pressure and I need to be the one to go and qualify our weight for the country. And so there was a lot of stress and pressure for that, but you can't perform if you really let it get to you. So you keep it at the back of your mind, but you go out there and you do the same thing you've always done. You wrestle, you try your very best and had some tough matches out there, but I was able to qualify 68. All three of us were able to qualify and now we have a full team going to the Olympics. And so a lot of the athletes around me by winning in Acapulco, they knew they were going to the Olympics. They were celebrating, they were happy. And for me, I was like, the, jo the job's not done. So I was very happy just to know that there would be a representative, but I definitely was not finished at that, at that time. I felt like I was just a little bit closer. I've never sat out the way I did at Olympic trials, and it was a little different than what I was used to. You know what, I, I took time, I rested, I stayed focused, and when it was time for me to compete, I was ready for whoever would win the challenge tournament. I went out there and fought hard. I liked it that there were two sessions and that we had a long break between the morning and the evening. And I also thought that the finals were really cool. I loved the setup of it and the fans. It was a very cool experience. It's crazy, it's something I've, I've dreamt of for years. So it's, it's just like hard to believe when something you've thought of for so long actually happens. Because it, it just, it feels so unreal, you know? I mean, it's crazy that I'm going to the Olympics, of course. Um, yeah, I, I just get chills thinking about it. Like, okay, on paper, I understand that I'm going to the Olympics, but the idea that I'm going to the Olympics has not set in. And honestly, I don't think it's gonna set in until I'm actually done competing in general. I, I feel like it's just so surreal. It's hard to believe. And I think, I think you're gonna have to ask me like after I'm done competing, how was it like to compete at the Olympics? And then I'll, I'll be able to understand it. And then at the same time, it's like, there, for me, there's just like this, this whole idea of the Olympics being like, like the biggest event ever in the whole entire world, you know, with all this history for athletes. And so thinking of it as like any other wrestling competition can be confusing. But the truth is it's just like any other wrestling competition. And I think we, we need to understand the, the pressure of it, but at the same time, we need to know that it's a wrestling mat, it's a wrestling match. There's one opponent in front of us. We gotta fight for six minutes and that's what it is. As far as mental preparation, we've had a lot of meetings about what it's going to be like in Paris, uh, as far as the mental side, the physical side, the setup of it, the plans, and it's a lot. So I think I've done a lot of things outside of training just to stay balanced. I've gone on a road trip in California, which was really fun. I've gone on long walks with my dog done cooking and baking. So I'm still training and preparing, but I'm also adding all of these extra things in just to feel more at peace with this, this huge event that's coming up very soon. At the same time, I'm staying focused and I also trust in myself that I know that when the opportunity arises, no matter what, I know that I will step up to whatever task I need to, and I will be able to perform out there. I mean, I want to become an Olympic champion. I want to fight my hardest. I can expect a lot of heart from me. I will give everything I have out there. No matter what, I will not stop fighting until the very last second. Before I compete, I want to know when I step on that mat before the whistle blows in my first match, I want to know that I've done everything I could to prepare for that moment. And if I know that, I think a lot of the pressure will be off. I'll know now it's just time to perform. It's time to use everything I did to prepare and fight my very hardest. And I think if I do that, I will be proud of myself.